Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today I'm going to ask a question. Where have all the radios gone? My God, I go up to the reseller sites and I can't find anything I'm looking for anymore. Uh, either they're discontinued or they're out of stock or whatever. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on. Oh, and by the way, if you think of it, click on the subscribe button for me, will you? Um, really want you to subscribe so you can click that notify button and find out when I come out with new videos. And, of course, questions or comments about the channel, just go ahead and make them down in the comments below. Um, anyway, where have all the radios gone? Uh, we've got all sorts of things that are going on in the world, right? A chip shortage, we've got... Uh, Oh my gosh, COVID. Uh, but I don't want to go into those things. I mean, those are kind of geopolitical things and, um, you know, kind of nasty topics to try to talk about. So what I really want to center on is what's going on in the amateur radio market right now. And one of the things that I did was I uh, decided I would start looking at the different radio uh, manufacturer sites out of Japan and get an idea of what they're actually still offering for radios. Uh, the ICOM site, you know, it looks like ICOM hasn't really changed their layout too much. Uh, they still have the 7100 for the all band. Um, of course, they, uh, they still uh, have the uh, ID5100A. Um, which is uh, a very, very nice VHF, UHF radio. And, of course, the 4100A. These radios have been around for a while. This is their dual band, um, dual listen model right there. Uh, there is their uh, single band. Something I did notice, though, is I don't really see an offering for a single band 440 or 220 from ICOM. Uh, at least not in their mobiles. Uh, now, uh, if we take a little look here at their base stations, which is basically their HF stuff, they have quite a wide assortment of HF equipment out there. Uh, you know, they still, of course, have the 9700 um, and uh, the uh, 7851. Uh, these are all very expensive, big money radios, but if you're a serious operator, they're pretty cool. Uh, they still have the 7610, and I think they'll have the 7610 for a while. Um, also, you know, they have the 7300, direct competitor, the FT991A. Uh, uh, amazing radio. Um, and, of course, the only big difference with this radio is this is not all band, all mode. It is strictly a HF 6-meter uh, radio. For their all band, all mode radio, they're sitting there with the IC7100, which is technically a mobile unit. All right? But for the most part, what they're coming out with really hasn't changed. Their product line is pretty stable at this point. And they still are selling a lot of radios. Um or a lot of different radios, I should say. Uh, by the way, I'm not covering any of the HTs that make this a 10-hour long video. Uh, but what I am seeing is the price of these radios are skyrocketing. And that, I believe, is attributed to the chip shortage. Um, now, let's take a look at Kenwood. You know, Kenwood has been consistently pulling back on the number of radios that they manufacture. And right now on their website, they're only showing four mobiles and four HF rigs out there. Um, and none of their HF rigs are all banned, okay? So they're, they're kind of in a different marketplace. I'm not really going to talk much about the 281A or the V71A. They're really good radios, don't get me wrong. But the one that I want to talk about is the TMD710 George Alpha. Now, the reason I want to talk about this radio is it's getting very hard to find. And its price has actually skyrocketed as well with the reseller. And there was something very disturbing that I saw when I went to my reseller and other reseller uh, uh, locations. I noticed that it says discontinued here. So that's a little scary. 
I mean, let's face it. This D, uh, uh, the TMD710GA does apers out of the box, has a GPS, and it has a full built-in TNC that you can actually hook a computer to the back of the control head, and you can make packet connections to stations from your computer. Very, very broad-range little radio. Uh, absolutely excellent dual band as well. Uh, dual listen, dual uh, or dual receive at the same time. Uh, nice radio. That said, if it's being discontinued, it makes me wonder what they're going to come out with next. Uh, and of course, you know, they have their uh, base station HF offerings, which, uh, you know, the TS890S is about a $3,000 radio, um, and the uh, 590SG is in the $2,500 range. So, uh, again, they're in the higher end of the price spectrum most of the time, but Right now, they're especially high because of the resale prices going on. Um, anyway, this discontinued bothers me. We'll see where that goes. Hopefully, uh, if they're discontinuing it, they'll come out with something new. Yesu, oh my goodness, Yesu. Well, they're now down to, it appears, only four VHF, UHF radios. Um, and there's something interesting here. I'm just going to kind of sneak back over here. Uh, it looks like they that uh, Kenwood has a single band radio, but it's only two meters. It also looks like uh, our good friends over here at uh, ICOM also have a single band radio, but it is only VHF two meters. Uh, there are no 440 single-band radios left anymore, which is a little disconcerting. Uh, the two dual-band radios that Yesu has is the FTM300DX, or excuse me, D4. This is a nice little radio. Uh, we're just kind of waiting for it to load here. Uh, this radio is comparable to, oh, I would say the uh, FT8800 um, the only difference is that C, uh, C4FM is built into it, so it'll do uh, Yesu's digital mode. And what we're seeing now is almost all VHF, UHF radios that Yesu is trying to put on the market now uh, support C4FM. Uh, we're going to talk at the end of the video a little bit about the uh, the uh, digital voice modes that are out there, the proprietary ones, as well as the open one DMR. But it's just going to be a brief conversation. The thing to remember here, though, is um, it appears that all of Yesu's mobile and VHF, UHF radios, with the exception of a couple single banders, uh, which make up half of their line now, uh, are... Oh, um, uh, C4 FM loaded uh, without the choice of paying extra for it or not. You're going to get it. Uh, the FTM 400 DR slash XDR, this is a radio that is attempting to be a direct competitor with um, the uh, TM D710 uh, that... Uh, Kenwood puts out because it does do apers right out of the box. My understanding, though, is it doesn't have a full built-in TNC, and if, if that's not true, then somebody uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, again, this also has the C4FM digital uh, voice in it. Um, and, you know, some of the old favorites. I mean, let's face it, the uh, FT2980, uh, this is a high-power 80-watt uh, VHF-only radio, 2-meter-only radio, very rugged, uh, designed for off-road use, and that's primarily the folks that purchase it. I happen to own its granddaddy, the 2900, uh, which is a 75-watt radio that we use for uh, a digital go kit that we can also use for phone in a pinch. And then, of course, the FTM 
3100R, which is the standard two meter transceiver. Um, and uh, it is basically a 65 watt two meter, not quite as ruggedly built, but of course, you know, front facing speaker, really good if you're going to mount it in a panel or something like that. Let's say that you're building out an EOC and you want a dedicated two meter radio. Uh, nice little radio. Now, let's talk about uh, uh, their HF line just really briefly because they have changed it. Let me go ahead and pull that up. Let's see. And the sad part of this to me is there's a radio that's now missing from this list. And it's the FTDX3000, which is one of my favorite radios. It's in a price bracket that makes it extremely affordable. And it has a lot of the features that are in the four and $5,000 radio range. And this is a radio that you could purchase new for under $2,000. Um, they've removed it. Um, I'm assuming they've stopped selling it. I don't see it available as a new radio anymore through the um, uh, resale market. Um, so, again, um, it's a shame, but it is what it is. They do have a new FTDX10, which is in that, I believe, same price bracket, but has much fewer features. So, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, a comparable radio with comparable features is going to be the FTDX101D. And this radio has comparable hookups and things like that and comparable controls available rapidly, um, although it is a radio that falls in about the $3,000 range. Uh, if you want this in 200 watts, rather than 100 watts, you'd get the FTDX101MP. Um, Great radio, don't get me wrong, but uh, my gosh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna miss the three thousand. That's for sure in the new market. Really a great radio. Just it's a shame. Uh, of course, some of the radios that went by the wayside, uh, the FT eight seventeen all band turned into the FT eighteen uh, HF six meter. Uh, this is a QRP radio, very low power mountain topper radio. Not a bad radio, don't get me wrong, but you, you're losing the VHF, UHF in it. Uh, and I think one of the reasons that uh, Yesu did that is it would cost too much into that radio and uh, increase the size too much to get the uh, uh, oh, uh, F, uh, excuse me, the C4FM digital in it, which they seem to be trying to incorporate in all the radios to try to kickstart their proprietary digital system. Um, the FT-857 has gone to the wayside, which was the mobile all-band. This is a 50-watt mobile with a 100-watt HF uh, transmitter built into it. Amazing radio. I own one. It's in a go kit. Uh, not exactly a contest radio, but it is an all-around radio. Um, and what they've done is they've basically redone the radio and pulled out the 2 meter 440 portion of it. Uh, and I think they've added a few more filters and things like that, maybe changed the accessibility software to make it a little easier to use. But, uh, eh, it is what it is. Uh, only thing that falls in an all-band now, of course, is the FT991A. Amazing radio. This is about a $1,500, $1,600 radio retail. Um, I really like this radio. I own one. Um, it is. Uh, I use it primarily, believe it or not, for VHF, UHF, because it really is a good VHF, UHF radio. It also does VHF, UHF sideband, which is neat to have in the shack. Uh, and it's my backup for uh, HF. If things go bad with the 3000 for whatever reason, I can just move a coax cable and I'm set to go. Um, uh, also, again, C4FM built into this radio. So, uh, boy, Yesu, you really want us to use that, don't you? <laughs> um, let's go ahead and move on to Alinko. And, you know, Alinko uh, had some really great radios that we would use in EOCs out here in Ventura County. Uh, we, they, of course, had the DR-135, uh, the uh, DR-235, and the dr 435. These are mono band radios. Um, one's a 2 meter, the other one's a 220, and the third one is a 440 radio. 
The reason that you'd use a mono band in a emergency operation center, of course, is if you have multiple operators, each operating a band, it's nice to be able to not have multiple bands and uh, things like that on the radios that you're having an operator use just in case they end up on the wrong band and the antenna doesn't support it, you're not going to damage that radio. Um, that said, you know, uh, times change. I understand that. Um, it's really kind of sad, but, uh, you know, they still show the uh, 235 and the 435 on their website, but I'll be darned if I can find it anywhere on the website, which is a disappointment. Um, anyway, uh, what that, or on the, on the reseller site, what, what that means is I believe they're just continuing uh, at least for sure the 235, which leads us to one of the major problems now. And that is that, uh, well, you know, we don't have a Japanese 220 mobile radio any longer that's out there. What we have is we still have Japanese HTs that are 220, but they're not going to put out the kind of power that we typically use when we're doing packet between EOCs. Um, that was one of the other nice features of these uh, uh, DR radios, right, is they actually supported a digital packet connection right into the back of them. So you could have a mic on the front, you could have it hooked to a TNC on the back and transparently transmit or throw it over on the digital side, pop the TNC on, and now you have a uh, digital radio to operate with, right? So it's, it's a shame. Um, what are we left with then? Because, my gosh, you know, uh, when these radios start to die, uh, we have uh, a bit of time and money invested in the concept of 220. Uh, I guess we could go to 440, uh, but we're going to run into the same digital problem with that, I think, uh, hooking to these radios. So there, there's a lot of issues that we're looking at now. Uh, from uh, a uh, EOC county standpoint for amateur radio. Now, there is a dirty little word called Chinese radios, okay? Now, we all own them, all right? We all say, oh, they're terrible, they're awful, but we all own them. And you know what? Now it appears that the uh, Chinese manufacturers are the only ones that are bothering to come out with a standalone 220 radio. Um, so as long as they have it out there, it may be worthwhile picking up. These are strategically priced under $150. A um, couple issues. They don't have direct interface for uh, uh, digital, so you'll have to engineer cables and do all sorts of other stuff to make them work digitally. But they, it can be done, and uh, at the price you could buy two of them, if you saw fit, one for phone and one for digital. Or you could rig up a switch or something to be able to switch the mic and audio and everything between a TNC and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, mic and audio output. Um, that's what I do here in the shack. That said, uh, requires additional training for the operators. Although amateur radios can figure anything, or op amateur radio operators can figure anything out, it can be difficult in high stress situations. You want them to intuitively be able to switch between the two. Uh, it certainly, it's a lot better if you can just pick a mic up. But again, this is an option, and it's a much less expensive option than uh, the uh, original Alinkos. Now. Uh, it's going to be up to the powers higher than me on whether we recommend this radio or not, but uh, I own one and it works well enough. I'll leave it at that. Uh, one thing I will mention, and of course we'll keep going here, here's a nice little dual band in E-Tone. This is uh, oh, basically a uh, 2 meter 440 dual band, dual listen, so it does it, does it right to uh, VHF, UHF, uh, UHF, VHF, 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 and UHF, UHF. So you can get any combination to listen to multiple frequencies on this, and it works really well. Um, it is an inexpensive radio compared to the other dual bands that are out there and available. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not a bad radio. It's Chinese, okay? Yeah, the front end is as good as. I always hear they're not as good as, but 
in a lot of cases, they're good enough. Okay? And uh, I'm, I'm not trying to sell anybody on the idea of the Chinese radio. I'm just saying that if you don't want to pay all the extra money for all this proprietary digital stuff, this might be a solution for you. Uh, if you want people to be trained on all the same radios, if you're stuck going with a 220 radio that's Chinese, you may want to stay in that same radio uh, group uh, just to have training across the radios a little easier for the folks that got to run them. All that said, I'll give you a warning, because I've owned a few of these. Uh, this particular radio, as a matter of fact. And the one important thing to remember is you never want to run it all the time at full power. It may say it's rated for 50 watts, but at the end of the day, uh, it's not going to last much more than a year if you are using it at 50 watts in normal use. Uh, I would say that uh, in most cases you want to use it at medium power and then step it up if you really, really need it. Um, once I developed that philosophy, uh, I stopped going through radios. <laughs> that said, though, I mean, there's lots of stuff out there. This right here is a nice little uh, tri-band, believe it or not. And this handles 2 meter, 220, and 440, strategically priced under $300. Um, again, I know, I know, it's a Chinese radio. But you know what? Uh, it actually looks suspiciously like a Yesu, doesn't it? Just like the other one did. Uh, don't think that uh, the Chinese don't borrow good ideas. Uh, this one's really interesting. This is a TYT. This is a quad band. Now, if you remember the FT8900, it was 10 meters, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 440. Four bands, four transmit bands. I hate to say it, it looked almost identical to this Chinese radio. The 8900 is out of production. Take a look at this. This is in production right now. And you know what? It's over $100 cheaper than the 8900 was in its heyday. So, again, it is not a perfect radio, but hey, it may be a solution if you, uh, if you want that 220 band and something more powerful than 5 watts. Now, why is it Right, that everybody, all these manufacturers seem to be eliminating radios and they all now seem to have some sort of digital phone data capability built into them. Why is that? Well, I think it's a bit of an arms race. I mean, if you look at Kenwood and ICOM, they use a uh, digital system called D-Star. And uh, it's an open standard with a proprietary codec. So what that actually means is it's truly not open, okay? Um, as the old saying goes, it is what it is. Um, they incorporate it into almost all of their radios now, and that may be why they're looking at dropping uh, uh, some of the VHF, UHF radios at Kenwood. Um, maybe they have a whole new line coming out that fully supports D-Star. I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, you've got Yesu, and they have their C4FM, which is their fusion system, which is totally proprietary. Uh, does it work simplex? Yeah. Uh, but the beauty of digital, of course, is to take it up on a repeater where you can have multiple channels and all this other cool stuff uh, and then link them all together across the Internet. Um, yeah, this sounds great. Sounds like a lot of fun, but uh, it is complicated. Uh, using it simplex is complicated. And, you know, in an emergency situation, when the repeaters are down, most people aren't going to be able to use them. So, again, we need that analog. And uh, in emergency communications, if that's really our primary focus, do we want to buy all this digital technology? Do we want to have to pay that extra money? Um, well, the Japanese manufacturers are taking that choice away from us. So, again, eh, what are you going to do? Um, by the way, uh, you know, to be fair, uh, the Chinese manufacturers, and I believe there are a couple of Linko radios out there, fully support DMR, uh, which is the uh, kind of open standard uh, for digital, um, which, uh, you know, uh, a lot of folks are starting to adapt here in Ventura County. So, you know, is this going to be how China wins the amateur radio uh, war? I don't know. 
Uh, but what I do know is this. The price of radios right now is going through the roof. A lot of the great radios that I have bought over the last five, six years uh, are going by the wayside. They're not going to be sold anymore. Um, time marches on. I understand that. Uh, I'm in uh, my, my quote-unquote day job. I'm a network engineer and a computer engineer. And I will tell you that, you know, good products disappear. New ones come in. Some are better, some are worse. You don't know, and it's up to the manufacturer what they want to do. But the reality of it is we're just along for the ride. So with all that, if you're looking to buy like a... Uh, TMD710, uh, I suggest getting your order in right away before inventories go out and they stop manufacturing it, if that's what they're going to do. Um, if you're looking for the uh, 220 radio from Alinko, uh, nobody has it. It's gone. Uh, it's still on the web page. Maybe if uh, the chip shortage lightens up a little bit, they may go back into manufacturing with it, but I don't know. Uh, everybody's talking like that one and possibly the 441 from Alinko is going to go away, um, leaving us actually with uh, no single band 440 radio out there. Anyway, with that, thank you for joining me for this video. I really appreciate it. My name is Stu, AG6AG. I know we've covered a lot, but I uh, hope you got something out of it. Um, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Click the subscribe button if you haven't. It really helps me out. Uh, any questions or comments, any corrections, anything like that about something that I've been talking about, please go ahead and make them in the comments down below. If you're asking a question, I try to answer those questions in a couple days. So uh, anyway, with that, AG6AG here, Stu, saying 73, and I really hope I hear you out there on the air.